Hello everyone and welcome to episode 32 of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. Today I'm delighted to be joined in conversation by Claire from the Irish Forest Garden. Claire is an incredible force for nature, having been friends with Mary Reynolds, the inspirational Chelsea Award winning landscape designer for many years. In 2014, Claire and her family worked with Mary to bring the forest garden from her book, The Garden Awakening, to life on a small, disused one-eighth of an acre paddock. This was the start of their incredible journey, embracing their responsibility to become true guardians of the earth, no longer fighting against nature, but working in harmony to nurture all creatures, both rooted and unrooted. As both Mary, Claire and her family's vision has evolved, so too has their approach and most recently they have expanded beyond the forest garden to embrace arcing and offering up even more land to nurturing the native flora and fauna. During this magical and laughter filled conversation, Claire takes us along on their journey. From the challenges of starting at below zero in a nature depleted cooch grass filled landscape to the highs of seeing their hard work literally bear fruit and witnessing the myriad of creatures that have benefited during their beautiful journey of co-creation with the earth. We share our mutual hopes as we acknowledge the changes that have occurred in our lifetime and how discussions around nature are seeping into the reality of more people. Claire imparts two profoundly simple but empowering pieces of wisdom for us all to embrace. Before doing something, always pause and ask why. And just do it, no matter how small the action may feel, just make the decision at the start of this new year to just do something and take that first step to becoming part of the solution. You'll be surprised at how quickly nature steps into the spaces we make for her. Welcome Claire and thank you so much for joining us on this episode of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. I've thank you. been following your amazing journey with your garden for a while so I'm quite excited to have a chat to you and learn a bit more. But um, I just get started with my guests with a little question just to sort of bring us back to nature. And so I just ask everyone really about their nature journey and their nature story. And it can be interpreted any way you like. So whatever maybe nature has meant to you through your life recently, a childhood, wherever you oh, fancy gosh. starting. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a big one, isn't it, yeah. Fiona? <laughs> yeah. Really? That's a very big one. Gosh, nature. Yes always been a big fan always like grew up in the middle of the countries I used to be called a village now it's probably more like a small town between Winchester and Southampton yeah <clears throat> an hour down from London and uh definitely would have been one of those children and I don't even know if they still do it these days you had the nature table as the oh, you know yeah. in primary I used school to love that yeah and we used to walk to school we used to have to go a few few yeah. fields you know to get to the actual school and you'd always be looking out for a nest or a yeah. fir cone or a, you know a leaf or yeah. anything really a nice stone a even. nice thing an old yeah. bit of bone or yeah. a, you know yeah. or a hare's leg that yeah. you find in the middle you know half gnawed on his and you'd bring it in and uh, and I must have been lucky having teachers that were very receptive to that sort of thing and yeah. as I say we did always used to have a um a nature table you we were always excited by it yeah. I've, I've obviously I've come from a family that um, I've always encouraged, you know, being outside, going hazelnut picking. I yeah. live near the Itchin. I'm very lucky, and only now do I realise when I talk to people here in Ireland that are keen river watchers or nature lovers or fishermen. Even they go, "Oh, the Itchin! Oh my God, that's the most." perfect chalk you know river oh is it a chalk clear oh, pristine but yeah. it used to be down the road from me so we used to go down there you know hazelnutting oh. or uh, picking chestnuts or catching minnows always putting them back catching yeah. minnows holding them up in the jam jar so my nature journey probably started when I was very small and just growing up surrounded by fields and countryside and just being yeah. out in it just, just a bit genuinely yeah. just the doing it and it was 
normal, wasn't it? I'm sure yeah. you must have a similar story yeah, being in Hertfordshire. I think the curiosity of childhood as well, isn't it? Your sort of yeah. natural curiosity and yeah. nature was just this wonderful adventure playground, really, wasn't it? There was always, totally. like you said, something. Yeah. And, to you, it. and you always, you know, the, the, the idea of birds just being able to fly, you know, yeah. what child and adult really doesn't imagine the magnificence of being able yeah. to fly. And when you were a child, I have them less these days, but dreams where you're actually flying and yeah. and and being and and being able to have that feeling of going up and actually flying and looking around the uh, yeah. the landscape. And actually, I remember those dreams now to this day. Yeah. You know, the the really magnificent dreams that you had. Yeah, when, there's something when you were able to fly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 But uh, so I've always been definitely been drawn to birds and um, yeah, but definitely birds, but general. Um, yeah, nature generally. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're always. Uh, when do you not feel more at peace when you're outside doing something in nature? You, yeah. you, just, you know, yeah, it's rare, a, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's the thing, isn't it? And I think, um, I mean, that's part of why I called my podcast what I did because it was yeah. like this. This sort of it was twofold. It was you know the the nurturing that we feel in nature, but also the need for that sort of reciprocity relationship that reconnection where we are returning to a place where we're also nurturing nature rather yeah, than we've sort absolutely. of <laughs> we've veered a little yeah, bit away totally. from it as a society <laughs> yeah and it takes a while doesn't it I mean I think yeah. you know you you telling me you you've got I was talking to one of my children last night about the um what they they're 16 coming up and trying to decide what they want to do for for, for going on after school and yeah I ended up uh, for for totally bizarre reasons. I ended up. I did an art degree and I, I went to France for a year. I came back. I, I worked in London and I kind of fell into the music industry yeah, purely okay. because I could type. I could touch yeah. type, and I got put in media agencies that actually ended putting. But they put me in Warner Brothers Records. I stayed oh, there for wow. five years. <laughs> then I went to ZTT Records. Stayed there for five years. Had my first child. And uh, ended up managing one of the bands that I'd met at ZTT. Moved over to Ireland. I've been managing them for you know good over twenty five years wow. now. But my youngest was saying like you know because I'd often sit down and watch uh, Chris and Michaela and the team on the oh, Spring yeah, Winter Watch yeah. or the Winter Watch or <laughs> yeah. you know ge general nature programs. We were talking yesterday because yeah. she often I, I would often be heard saying if people ask me what would you have done if you didn't do music what would you have rather have done knowing now as a nearly 60 year old person what choices you could have picked yeah I'd love I would have loved your job you yeah. know and I always yeah. think that wildlife photography or yeah. um really learning about that and being able to go out in nature so I kind of ended up coming around to it eventually but my yeah. youngest was saying like I'd like to do that. That would be a really yeah. good job to do. And and I'm, but it's there just seems to be more. I suppose it's just more talked about, more opportunity. I think, yeah, these days. I mean, I think um, I me and my partner were reflecting the other day, even, and I was sort of saying, I wish like even I'm mean, I'm just over forty, and I was mm. saying even when I was at school, like nature orientated jobs wasn't weren't yeah. things that were really talked about you know yeah. it wasn't you went to your careers advisor and it was you know oh well yeah. that's nice dear but you need to have a proper profession totally. kind of no, thing no, totally it def and, um, definitely yeah, yeah. Def definitely even previous to that I mean I remember yeah. my careers teacher telling me you, you you should look at all of your what you're good at. I mean I was very artistic and I did yeah. biology as an a-level I did yeah. art and biology they, they were my things to pick I was told like go and work in a bank yeah that was that really yeah. was it, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and you were you were and... you were probably brushed up as a woman. You're either yeah. going to work in a bank, <laughs> yeah. you're going to work in Reception. some yeah. thing <laughs> until you get married, and then you'll have children, of course. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. But you know, yeah. When, when, when sorry, I cut across you there. You were saying no, when you were no, not when at you all. were at school. And that's what yeah, they were. Yeah, and we're just just saying that now there there do seem to be more opportunities, which is is great because I think a lot of the sort of the generation below me so probably like your children are, are sort of falling yeah. into that really do have this this strong connection to nature don't they and I think yeah. I think it's 
because their lives have become so hectic, it's it's really become a real sanctuary for them, hasn't it? Where they can yeah, it it, find... it, 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 it had yeah. My eldest is is into into horses basically and kind of re retraining old race horses oh, really, wow. so they're not um yeah thrown on the rubbish heap. Yeah. But it's um you know from a very holistic perspective but but it's uh it's definitely something and you know yourself as someone with horses I'm sure it's <laughs> yeah. it's a passion and when you've got yeah. that passion that will stay with you for life yeah. and it's you know when she's rolling in last night from lessons at eight o'clock at night having stood out in the cold for four hours you know it's got to be a passion to you wouldn't yeah. <laughs> There's I no think way yeah, you'd I think be doing that, you know. Win it's... Winter is the time that sort of makes yeah. and breaks you as a, exactly. a horse person, isn't it? It's... Oh yes. Oh, <laughs> if it's yes. not mud, it's oh, <laughs> frozen don't... fingers. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. But yeah. I think there's there's like you say that there's just more opportunity. Well, it just it just wasn't ever. It wasn't talked about back. I think you no. really would have had to have known or been grown up in an environment where people were saying to you why don't you go and do this as a particular yeah. job and being pushed in a particular way? Yeah. It just was, there just wasn't those conversations no. being had. Not, no. not where I was. Not that no, anyone I, was being yeah. like, you know, neglectful or nasty. That They were just not, they just weren't options to sort of like even think about, go and do anything along yeah. the, the, the yeah. nature. But in this day and age, you'd imagine with the whole, obviously we're all having to talk about climate change we're having to talk about an even bigger you know that goes hand in hand the biodiversity loss yeah. it's just a massive precipice yes. that we're yeah. on yeah. and I think people are at least starting to wake up and realize that bit yeah bit. and I think I mean that's that's the thing I mean I I do try to sort of you know not not naively but try and sort of frame things in a, in a way that's hopeful and and I think like there is a little bit of hope that we can take from that that there is now these these jobs and careers in this industry yeah. or these industries that are focusing more on the environment and you know just sort of uh looking for ways to help and support it and monitor it and you know that that's that's a good thing in that it, there is yeah. a shift coming in society that even yeah. in our lifetimes we've seen like it's got a growing importance that totally. there are yeah. career opportunities now so um, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um but we uh or, or, are... or even we even know we even know phrases like biodiversity yeah or exactly that they're in ecology. you know common in the language they're now, common. Aren't they? yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah, so our you... baseline our baseline shifted in that respect we wouldn't have really talked about it we kind yeah. of and unfortunately again growing up in the 70s 60s 70s uh 80s i think we just took it for granted everything yeah. was taken for granted there was always this conversation with scientists that were at the yeah, cutting edge I... probably going like hang on a minute lad, you know we're, we're screwing the planet lads we're screwing up we're screwing up but obviously we're, we're set, on, set on a path and it's very hard yeah. to change everyone's mindset it's just too big sometimes for people yeah. to get get their heads around so yeah, yeah it is yeah, um, it is amazing isn't it when you um you look back at people like I mean even uh well he's King Charles now isn't he but when he was yeah, Prince yeah, Charles yeah. you know his sort of organic movement and what he was saying back in like the 70s and you yeah. know that was supported like you say by scientists and and yeah. evidenced and things and yeah, yeah. it's it's <laughs> and he was and he was laughed at really yeah. you know like a lot of people was like yeah yeah whatever Charlie yeah. you go talk to your plants but yeah. and now in this day and age just talking to Mary Reynolds who obviously you know about Mary there's one tree of hers that she does talk to he's a Scots a Scots pine called Kevin yeah. and she talks to him oh, and he's great. the biggest you know it's a kind of experiment yeah. an anecdotal experiment but he's got very tall she goes chats to him every day comparable yeah. to the other ones in the area that she planted at exactly the same time That's so it's uh it? yeah it is really yeah yeah, yeah. and I think um they, and it's I love I mean I love like there are these like threads through language and that are passed down and you know it's you know like real real gardeners I want to say like used to talk to their plants didn't they it was like you know accepted yeah. practice and yeah. but you know they didn't you know there was maybe not that sort of 
actually acknowledgement that actually the the plant responded to it it was just yeah. they were sort of a you know a kooky garden gardener yeah, 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 yeah. and um but yeah, yeah. And, we, and we probably we're only just scratching the surface oh now, we really you know, are aren't we, we? Yeah. when like you know you, it feels like only in the last year or so that it's been kind of even written about in in mainstream media or you know press outlets where people are realizing that the whole mycelium networks of the way that trees yeah. talk to each other, the way that trees respond when they're being attacked by, you know, a wasp or an ant or whatever, we have no idea what really is going on. No, no idea. Nothing. And then you read, then you read Tolkien and you kind of like go like, yeah, yeah. With, with the ants, you know, know the big trees, yeah. Yeah. you think like, yeah, yeah, you, you had some inkling of what was going on there yeah. and you extrapolated that into a book and, you know, yeah. magnificent stories that uh, probably are fairly, you know, could have a lot of truisms in there. Yeah, I think, I think that's the thing I often, I love going back to, to books from sort of previous eras and things mm. and you think, and you look back and you think, gosh, there was so much wisdom there. And yeah. but like you, like we said about um, uh, Prince Charles, it was, you know, they were sort of mocked and laughed and you were a bit yeah, daft. Yeah, totally. Really. You were marginalised. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we didn't have the science at that time to really understand it. And it's been amazing to see, like, the amount of knowledge that's really in the last sort of 30, 40 years come forward of our mm. understanding more of, of how plants sort of work together communicate yeah. support each other i mean there's amazing isn't there things yeah. of of basically how the trees will feed each other and work yeah. together and yeah. communicate it's I, well i find it fascinating it's like... no, no, it is and even like you know and i know we're supposed to be talking about forest the forest garden which is where we started with um you know this sort of like project here on our land there's elements of that obviously a lot of it is you know permaculture elements you know yeah. take a lot from permaculture as well but there's tr obviously trees and plants that you plant that are companions that yeah. are going to be dynamic accumulator type plants like comfries or chicories or you know sorrel that have those long tap roots that yeah. bring up all the minerals or you've got um nitrogen fiximum plants like Eliagnus or broom that you plant with your fruit trees or yeah. with your fruit bushes because their their ability to bring bring in nitrogen and store it in the ground and give it to their mates next door yeah. in exchange for a cup of sugar or whatever they're exchanging. <laughs> yeah, I you love know. that. I love that description well, from you um, yeah. on your website. I think you yeah. put like oh yeah, it's like probably, imagining, yeah, yeah. imagining it is, you exactly popping out to your neighbour for yeah. a cup of sugar and it's yeah. like yeah. yeah. You <laughs> Just, it must be you know yeah. or a bit of a bit of a mineral hit here or a bit of yeah. a, but it, that must be you know how it works yeah. and you know and that I suppose I mean shall I talk about the forest garden yeah where, that'd where be we lovely. started I mean, we, we, we because we're gonna we're gonna waffle it. on yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll waffle on otherwise <laughs> for the next but, three uh, hours and not yeah. even touch on it but no, it might so, be you know yeah that but, that was that was the reason I invited you on, but just I find you fascinating anyway. But yeah, you um you have this amazing garden project that you started. I think it was it was inspired by Mary, wasn't it? Mary it Reynolds. Was, who, it was. If, it was. If yeah. anyone hasn't heard of her, I really encourage you to look her up. I will put her link in our show notes as well. Um, she was. Well, she was a garden designer, wasn't she? And she'd been to the Chelsea she was. Flower Show she was and, a very, and awarded yeah, and things. Yeah. She was a very young, um, I think she remains the youngest woman to win the Chelsea. She's only 28 when she won a gold medal. Wow. And her garden was next to Prince Charles's garden, oh, actually. Wow. Okay. And I think he wandered into her garden and was very impressed. I think he was immensely impressed. And I think he yeah. may have even thought it might have been, I think he was rather jealous, actually. <laughs> I think he actually really vibed with Mary because yeah. of what she, the whole garden that she had um built yeah. and I think people at that particular show I remember her telling me this is a long time ago you know Mary's knocking 50 so she she was only 28 so that would have been well over 20 years ago yeah. now um and she said you know people were going into that garden and spontaneously crying because it felt where she was using hawthorn and native yeah. flora that they'd taken from Ireland um, and a huge big moon circle and uh, moon gate entrance. It looked a fabulous garden. Yeah. I, I've never yeah. seen it, but it looked yeah. a fabulous garden. I didn't know Mary then. 
you no know, people were coming in and crying because they just felt like okay th this is where this is the vibration i should be getting from a yeah. garden space from an outdoor space and it's yeah. yes it's designed <clears throat> but it's uh it's drawing and using plants that we're told in the western world you know you go to your local garden center i'm sure it's very hard to find a native plant in your garden center in herefordshire yeah. just as much as it is for me in wexford it's yeah. you know yeah it's not it is it's very difficult you won't find one yeah yeah why and, do you want uh, that weed <laughs> i know why do you want yeah. that old weed when you yeah. could have this beautiful south african yeah. flax or whatever yeah. you know like but i don't want that because yeah. what's that what good's that gonna do any of my local things here yeah, there we're yeah. not in south africa but um anyway i digress but yeah I, but mary had done that garden um and she was a garden designer that that was our point there mary was a garden designer she was very um lauded as a garden designer but as she grew in her process and in her interaction with the world and i probably met mary she was actually having a film made about her chelsea win called dare to be wild I met her backstage at um, a friend's concert and she knew I managed singers and she needed a bit of help getting um, navigating through the film process. Yeah. And she was in the middle of trying to write a book and she was kind of writing herself out of a job, which is what she always says, <laughs> which is true because as a garden designer, you know, you're kind yeah. of, yeah, you're putting uh, control on yeah. space, I suppose. And as we all know, anyone who's got any sort of outside space, it wants to do its own thing. Yeah. And especially if you're, uh, you know, so it, it's a, it's a it's a hard old um, it's a hard old square a uh, circle to square that one when you're yeah. trying to sort of like, and uh, and again you're growing up, you're learning, you're experiencing. And I think Mary's first book, The Garden Awakening, was um, it came to fruition. And we we put it out. You know, I helped her put that book out. Mary was in rented accommodation at the time. And it, it was all about, uh, it was a lot of permaculture ideas in there, obviously, but there was a lot of forest gardening ideas in there. There were a lot of ideas from um, uh, the One Straw Revolution. There's a book, I cannot remember his name. He's a Japanese fellow. And the, the lad, Larry Korn, God rest his soul, he he edited Mary's book, The Garden Awakening, lovely man. He, was, he used to live in... Um, San Francisco I think he was but he came over and visited the garden when we first started it here oh. anyway we, she was writing that book and we both said I, I'm, I'm a doer I'm a real doer yeah. <laughs> great to see all these things on the page we're, we're telling people yeah. how to do this sort of stuff in theory let's make one well, yeah. I've got an I've got an old paddock out there. The kids, you know, Izzy's um, horse, you know, she uh, had been removed from this paddock. I think it's only a, it's about a sixth of an acre or an eighth of an acre. I can't yeah. remember, but it's not I massive. Think, yeah, I think you said I think you say it's about an eighth of an acre. So it's <laughs> maybe not a, an eighth. It's not a huge it's, amount no, of not. space, which I think no. is also wonderful because it feels attainable it's to doable. a lot of people, isn't it? Yeah. It is, and 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 that particular book, and that was the large garden in that book. So the other gardens that Mary was um, uh, advising people, and she, and she yeah. there's designs in that book. It's a good yeah. book to get if yeah. you've actually got even a small, small, much smaller outside space, because even mine at a, a, an eighth of an acre, it is work. You know, yeah. all yeah. of it is work. As she, as again, as anyone knows, but I think Mary sold this. Week. Oh no, it's no work at all. Once you've done it. <laughs> It'll sort itself out. It's no work, which, to a certain extent, that is true because you are you're you're kind of trying to mimic a, a woodland, yeah. and you've got these layers of plants, be they tall canopies or medium canopies and shrubby fruit bushes and uh, ground cover yeah. strawberries or root crops or climbers and. You know, and we had to put in any any garden shelter, 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 shelter. Yeah. We had there was nothing here. It was just south southwest. Um, it was a paddock with, with the bane of my life, Fiona, couch grass. Oh, you love, know. yeah, God. <laughs> I I did read some of your yeah. early stories, and I believe oh, um, right, yeah. you uh, you enlisted the help of some some pigs. I think didn't we you, did to, we did to get going. <laughs> We enlisted the help of some pigs, and again, you know, if I, if I, um, there's a few people, a lot of people were trying to do the same, and I was say, just yeah. come and have a look. It's easier to come yeah. and look because we've made 
so many mistakes or we yeah. could say to you like this is how we did it and if we did it again we would have done it slightly differently i would have had the horses in to eat the grass down to the yeah. bare minimum before i put a goat or a pig on that land yeah. to turn it up and then i would have covered the whole lot with probably black plastic something okay. yeah that to suppress is everything definitely yeah. going to suppress it um because it was such it was too big a space and we, you have to remember as well you know and i think forest gardening the idea of it all, I think it probably would have originated in more tropical regions like Amazonian yeah. rainforest, yeah, probably. where probably indigenous people are, are dealing with fantastic black soil in the first place. Yeah. And, you know, decent canopies and a huge bloody forest all around as well. Yeah. And probably creating small spaces where they yeah. can have some food security. And, yeah. you know, it's and it's a great idea, not only for you know we all look at monoculture crop fields and we all look at the poor hair sat outside it looking in going like there weren't me living there is there or yeah. the, you know uh, I, I often see them that that isn't you know that's a reality I often yeah. see them running up and you know running up and down the lanes and I rarely see hairs you're lucky to see hairs in your garden yeah. rarely see yeah. hairs these days but um what was I saying? Oh, yeah. But we're in Ireland, you see, and we are. We're not surrounded by Amazonian forests. <laughs> we're barely surrounded by hedgerows, really, yeah. which is probably the Irish rainforest equivalent. But yeah. there we are surrounded by industrialised sort of like, you know, farming. Really. And they they yeah. look like green fields, but they're far, you know, they're yeah. industrialised crop the, yeah. things you know or they're rem a lot removed or... from from nature and and what they would have yes. been yeah yes yeah. they are and they're they're probably not that um giving to di biodiversity yeah. or anything so everything's are... quite depleted in them so it's really you're really is... starting from like yeah. below zero uh, yeah. Well, you're, yeah you're starting from below zero and you're kind of i hate using the word battling against anything but i have you know we here we're always conscious of the grass um just <laughs> it just comes up all the time but, but then we started on you know this 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 whole land that we're on would have been a, a farmer's cow field and it would have been planted with a particular sort of grass for for cows and if it's yeah. left it is just you know knotty old cooch grass yeah. which is a bugger it's a yeah. real bugger to bloody <laughs> it's do anything with it is an absolute beast <laughs> yeah. oh god but it's uh, so it, it definitely was um I would I, I would have a few differences of, of, of ways of doing it. Even going out there yesterday, I've still got areas because the idea being that once you get to a certain point, as you know, when you're under certain uh, shrubs or trees and they've got to a certain height, you don't have the grass. Yeah, they're they're yeah. out. The grass is out competed by the the various different Plans diverse yeah. plant range that you've got, and you may have. You know, it's so it's a, it's definitely been a, an interesting learning curve. It's a fantastic space. And I think anyone that ever comes into it um, is is genuinely moved by the energy in there. You're, it, you're eight, eight, almost nine years down the yeah, road from I when you first started. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it must be. It's knocking on now. But it didn't take yeah. that long for it to become quite... A, 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 it really didn't take it was only a couple of years before like the everything you know because felt the initial, structured and it felt it, yeah. it definitely because mary always designs like um and this is the thing you, you forget and again with forest gardens i think it's very important to remember that it's you know the human element is definitely uh, crucial we, we yeah. live here we we have to be feel part of this space and we want yeah. to be part of the space and we want to be able to go out and sit there and enjoy the yeah. that, that natural environment mary is you know a good designer with people like myself who would never think of these sort of things she <laughs> does build a fire pit you know so we've okay. got a lovely round yeah. structure well just around and we haven't bought in any um you know if we had a hundred thousand quid we'd probably have built like you know nice walled bits and this and <laughs> other. But we've done it totally by hand and with yeah. no money really so it's yeah. it's all sort of like odds and sods that we've found about but it yeah. works it all works it's rustic i think is probably yeah. the word Fiona. <laughs> but the um 
but no, Mary, Mary designed, um, and it's probably this is probably an element of most of her garden designs. She put in um, a lovely fire pit area, and she yeah. also put in a wishing circle area. Oh, wow. So you've got these two different sort of circular areas with yeah. nice meandering paths through that paddock. And it is like a jungle, even out there now at the dead of winter, there's mm. always interest out there. Um, we would have sat down myself and her cell, you know, she got a bag of flour out originally and we we had the, we tried to get rid of as much of the grass as possible. We, yeah. we covered it in quite a lot of cardboard and hay and straw yeah. and and kind of created the areas, the spaces, the, the paths and the wishing circle and this and the other. And, and 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 planted bare root trees that were literally okay. whip, whippy little things yeah, because yeah. apparently that is the best thing to do and I can contest to that that is because before I'd bought trees that were probably six seven eight years old okay. in pots but I think and they'd struggled yeah in, in other parts of the garden they just struggled because I think it's kind of they just they they can't it's like keeping a child in a very constricted yeah. thing and, and it then just can't do its <laughs> throwing thing them out it's, into the world yeah. and saying survive yeah so yeah. when you're when you're getting bare root stock i think it's always better to do that because the things that we were putting in is whips that were like you know this big yeah. were out competing these huge great potted trees that we yeah. bought I, I died don't... eventually you know yeah we we planted a uh, an oak tree that i guess he was supposed to be about three three or so years old I think wow. he was about five probably about five foot tall and he was in a pot and mm. exactly like you said like we really had to nurture him for probably yeah. like four years like we've you know kept an eye on making sure he's got water and yeah. you know talking to him like Mary with, with her, yeah. you know and just really sort of it was quite intensive and if you yeah. you know and we, obviously we've had a few droughts and things which hasn't helped but this I think this summer so we planted him probably 2019 so this last summer was the first summer that we didn't actually have to water anything yeah through the summer um yeah, yeah. and and he hasn't grown a huge amount like yeah. he's grown but it's sort of like he's it he's constricted invested in some more way. time in sort of like just kind of Getting his head straight, yeah. surviving. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, but I, it, that it really. I mean, I'm looking at my. Um, we planted a permaculture hedge. That was one of the first jobs all the way around the paddock to actually protect things, give yeah. it shelter. They, they. I need. That's an annual job that I have to do every bloody year, at least once a year, and it grow. You know, they, they, yeah. everything. It, it's just so you know yeah. my my six foot hedge that I would like to keep it six foot because I don't need it to be 10 12 yeah. 15 foot because yeah. otherwise there's no light getting in there at yeah. all and um that's not really what I you know the, obviously the <laughs> object the object was always like to you know me and Mary were sitting there like right let's make this forest garden because obviously once you plant your we've got a good few nut trees damson green gauge elder um uh what's the other trees are crab apples a cooking apple i've got in there like there are so we've got about seven or eight biggish trees in yeah. there um and obviously with the idea of for us to eat yeah, yeah. i don't i don't mind sharing any of this sort of stuff with some yeah. of the birds but <laughs> But, you know, and again, we're not in the Amazon where your average toucan can probably go next door and get his nuts yeah. and this, that and the other. We live in Ireland. So yeah. what I've noticed with my trees and my black currants, red currants, white currants, gooseberries, yeah. worcesterberries, jossberries, strawberries, everything that's planted in that garden, it became quite apparent quite quickly that unless I had a one eighth of an acre net to put over the whole <laughs> bloody thing, I was not going to get a huge crop of anything out of yeah, this garden. Yeah, you, you were the you were like oh, the all gosh. day buffet in this I know. But landscape then to, devoid of of, of anything of else. Anything else. Yeah. So you can imagine. This is what I think anyway, and you know, obviously this is only anecdotal, but even looking couple of days ago i've got a little apple tree out there that's still got apples on it and they'd all dropped the uh, especially since the cold weather hit the um, i had 10 blackbirds you know what a blackbird's like yeah. doesn't like to hang out with its mates that yeah. much very territorial piss yeah. off 
every other blackbird in sight. Yeah. But there was 10 of them. There was a couple of field fairs. Yeah. There were a good few robins. There was blues. They were all over the sink because, they're, you know, it's obviously easy pickings and yeah. they're not in the other fields anywhere yeah. else. So you could imagine in the height of summer, or at least when the, you know, the, the early raspberries come in and the good yeah. and the boysenberries and all these fruit... Oh, I tell you, it broke my heart a few times. <laughs> I've, I think the very first year I had boysenberries. I don't know if you've ever tasted a boysenberry, but it's a very delicious, largish, very succulent, like must be a cross between a blackberry and probably a tayberry or something along that yeah. line. Very, it's a vicious plant, very yeah. vicious. And if I if I ignored it completely, I'd have just three acres of boysenberries <laughs> and brambles having a great time. But I remember the very first year, it was such a heavy cropper and I was waiting, waiting, waiting yeah. <laughs> until literally overnight, you go out to go, right, I'm going to pick her out. All gone. Gone. <laughs> gone. And that was the first time I think I thought to myself, hmm, okay, I think, I think the animals are liking what we're doing here yeah. very, very much. And yeah. um, it's going to be a bit of a... Luckily, I like animals. Luckily, yeah. I like birds. <laughs> I wasn't out there with my gun trying and to you're, shoot yeah, anything. Yeah, you're not, you're not yeah. dependent on the food for survival. Luckily, so, I'm yeah. not. Yeah. If I was, I'd probably be a bit more annoyed or I'd be yeah. a bit more vigilant, set yeah. up, you know, shaky things or whatever. But, you know, birds are clever. And as we were saying, there's why wouldn't they come? This is an yeah. absolute fantastic five-star buffet yeah. Yeah. that I get the most unusual animals and birds yeah. coming into here since we started that whole um, process with the forest garden, which is, you know, as I say, it's it's a it's a learning curve because we're not in the Amazon. It's we're in Ireland and it is rainy, but it's I, I wouldn't. I, I'm really glad we did it, and I'm going to yeah. keep going with it because you know the amount of you know medicinal herbs and you know be it but the be it the comfrey or the mints or the sages and the valerian that i can grow there the arnica even and yeah lots of and st john's wort i make a great tincture out of the st john's wort which people say really does does help with their moods but it's there's you know there's the it's a very interesting garden to have and yeah. one i'm going to keep tipping then, away at yeah you've done everything sort of organically haven't you as well so you, yeah yeah you, no we, yeah, we've got, got our organic in... status now as well we got yeah. that i oh, think last yeah. year no oh, it maybe. was yeah because yeah. it was obviously we started this garden then that wacky um the big stop started yeah. with covid <laughs> yeah. and no one could do anything and then we kind of start you know we were bored like everyone yeah. but we were lucky that we had outside space that we could go and do something in so yeah. myself and joe my partner we we ended up um converting a sand arena that okay the, that yeah. wasn't being used anymore to a market garden oh, wow. and we did a box scheme and we, we were, we've already we've been doing things organically for a long long time but we said why don't we just go and try and get it official and, and yeah. we did yeah we, we got our organic status last year which is which is good because yeah. it's a no-brainer when you actually start thinking about it, it's like what the hell yeah it's retraining even for us since we moved in here which is a good 15 years ago yeah. when we first came here you know there would have been areas of gravel that we would have been trying to keep devoid of yeah. weeds yeah. or pulling up that dandelion these yeah. days we ask ourselves why why are we doing that why would yeah. why would we not just let that be why why what's why, why are we so ingrained to think that that plant shouldn't be there but i think that's part of the key isn't it it's just oh, yeah. a simple like yeah you know just momentary pause and questioning well yeah. hang on uh, a minute why yeah. why are we doing that actually yeah. and what why yeah. is is the question i would ask myself if, if, with anything actually and, and obviously i've become more hardcore with my my <laughs> my practices probably joe's yeah. even more hardcore than me but you know if i say like you know i need to prune that tree he'd be going why yeah I'd be, well <laughs> kind of need to prune that when i think to to stimulate the you yeah. know you sure and i'm like mm, yeah i don't know you know mate? Yeah. so there is a lot of a questioning of why but yeah. i think for both of us and we look at our our place because the forest garden came to fruition as i said it's an ongoing thing it's still not no work, but it's, yeah. you know, I haven't got to that 
point yet. It's definitely still work, but the work is mainly grass related. Okay. So in this time of the year, I will go out, I'll be harvesting like the willow that goes around my um, fire pit and mulching that because uh, part of a forest garden process is obviously like, you know, you cut and leave a lot of the yeah. things you can, you're you're re re uh, introducing organic matter all the time. You're sort of circulating. So yeah, 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 that's yeah. the idea. Is well. you're circulating all the all the material, and you know, uh, and as I say, we've planted um, things like broom and early agnus that that are companion that will be bringing nitrogen in and helping in that res regard, and the dynamic accumulators and the comfrey, which is great. You just cut and you leave it, yeah. or or nettles. We're making, you know, we make a nice nettle tea. We've got a couple of little areas for water, but um, but I will have to go out and attack the grass again. And it's not it's not a massive job, but I I'd rather pull that bloody grass up cover it again <laughs> with some cardboard and just get another plant in but it's an ongoing yeah. process so at yeah. some point hopefully the jobs that i need to do are probably just going to be hacking back the hedgerows yeah. to keep it Ooh. you know to get a bit yeah. of light and the space coming in and hopefully just you know maybe if i need to prune things i need to prune them but mm. yeah or making the odd dead hedge here and dead hedge there mm. but you know it's that's that's yeah. that's the forest garden but then you know we all developed again and I know, yeah I was gonna say and this is where Mary's gone <laughs> on to isn't it <laughs> she's a terrible woman to know she keeps <laughs> she keeps me busy but yeah. no but you know we obviously did that garden and 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 it remains a fabulous place and a really nice space to have friends around and to you know we do do um talks I've got another friend couple of friends actually who are more uh, into their food and foraging and they yeah. would come and we do sort of a couple of times the last couple of years we've we've had events here yeah, where we okay. feed people from yeah. the produce from the garden, that, we've, so, yeah. that we've that we've made and or you know with with flavors from the forest garden yeah. and fruit vegetables that we've actually grown and they've been really really nice things to do um and I'm sure we'll do them again but after that forest garden initially, you know, we, we got that up and running. Mary changed her um, thinking process again. And, and, and again, kept, she's just determined to write herself out of a job, really. Yeah. And <laughs> kind of like came to the clues that, you know, all of these designed spaces, they have because of the huge, ridiculous loss of biodiversity that we've got and our um our need to feel like we need to control these spaces yeah. we actually need to be really designing and creating habitat for nature because yeah. our gardens are just a wasted space otherwise yeah. if we i think what mary's um idea is uh, i think what she's saying is um you know if you've got if you're lucky enough to have any sort of garden space try and grow try and step outside the industrialized food system even for yeah. one plant do it yeah. do your tomatoes do your strawberries do do a bit yeah. of broccoli do a few carrots something yeah. take half of that space and try and grow your own food and the other half give it back to nature as simple as that and yeah. you know and you may have to you definitely will have to step in and be a creature that we don't have anymore yeah. and keep it to a, a state where things can actually come in and you can try and create as many ecotones and as many um just areas as possible be it you know obviously water is a great one stone piles yeah. log piles wood piles dead hedges gorse, all the all the all messy those... things that we uh, exactly. that aren't allowed <laughs> No, all the messy in, things that yeah. aren't allowed in normal normal gardening yeah. practices and yeah. don't, you know, resist the urge to go at this time to buy bulbs in the, you know, in the nursery or go and ask your local nursery, why can't I find a local mm. not organic broom here? Or why mm. can't I find any native, like genuine native wild flower seeds? Or why is that yarrow not? any good here you know why mm. am i buying something that's from asia I mean, that's that's the thing isn't it even like you go and you think you're doing you're doing good because you you've got a, a nice wild flower mm. mix but it's like really flamboyant and it's yeah. not actually native wild no, flowers and that's the thing yeah. it's usually if we don't realize and again we've all done yeah. it we've all yeah. done it 
you know, you've done it. I'm sure I've done yeah. it. I know I've done it. But it's, you know, but you then you learn, you think uh, you think a bit more about it. You go, like, yeah. And then you've got agitators like Mary who are sitting yeah. there going, oh, are hardcore agitators, basically. Yeah. And eco-activists that go, like, no, think again, think again, think yeah. again, think again. Why are you doing that? Why do you think you, why do you think you need this lovely, pretty. fantastic, <laughs> pretty, yeah. controlled, yeah. tidy space? Because yeah. that is not helping I mean, you can imagine as someone who likes nature, can you imagine all of our lawns, even if we gave half, even if we ignored half of them, yeah. how much diversity, you know, be it for flora or fauna, yeah. how much would come back? Well, that's, I mean, so Mary's, it's her latest book. Oh, yeah, it? that's, a, that's is, a, um, I should say that. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. we are the Ark, is it? Is we that... are the Ark. Yeah. And the Ark, and the Ark the... stands for acts of restorative the... kindness oh, to the yeah. earth. Yeah. And um, and I and I see when did I see it recently? It must have been Country File or somewhere like that. I thought, oh yeah, they've they've kind yeah. of yeah. taken that idea on board. Yeah, but I it, think they're doing acts of kindness as well, aren't they? I, I think I it's um it is it's an incredible book, and I would recommend. I, I have recommended it several times previously. Oh, I've had quite good a few woman. people who have been inspired by her her movement, mm. and like you said, it's just what's so nice about the way she's written it is that it's accessible for for everyone like and everyone. you know even yeah. if it's like you're in a flat and you've got a window box it's yeah. like she, yeah. you can do your bit yeah and um and it makes it, sense when yeah. you read these things i remember we talked about it obviously we we all me um, and mary and joe would, would be she lives about 30 minutes away from me so we're not that far from each other so we would get together and talk yeah. all these ideas through and yeah. and 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 have the just have lots of different interesting yeah. conversations about it and obviously Mary's ideas change our ideas change but they definitely have changed for the better I think yeah. for all of us you know yeah. you, you really do sort of like it's a no-brainer once you come over to the other side of the <laughs> fence yeah. and you're sitting there you can still create a very magical yeah pretty pretty I was gonna if, say I was gonna correct pretty myself is what we want but <laughs> yeah. but it is yeah, yeah. but you as a nature lover yeah. You know, if you come, you know, there's a lot of people came in the summer. Um, Mary was one of them, actually, because I've got a particular bank that we've just left. The thistles mm. were the first thing that we kind yeah. of left. And it definitely was the first thing that really made us go A plus B equals C. You know, it really, it was the joined up thinking of, because we had horses, they used to eat the thistles, yeah. you know, creeping thistles every year. When they'd gone, we left them. Um, and we couldn't be bothered to do anything because we had a couple of acres. It's too much yeah, land to yeah. do anything with, which was good. But the, we'd left them for a season, another season. And one day we went out and it was just covered in tortoiseshell butter, covered. Yeah. Like it was about like 50 or 60 yeah. butterflies on it. And you, me and Joe were like, ah, oh, okay. Yeah. They all they all seem, the creeping thistle for most of us in gardening terms is a like, yeah, yeah, yeah. the like devil the no. yeah, yeah. You, and you well, for farmers as well like they're yeah. really you know yeah. that's like yeah. the evil <laughs> the evil that, um, that must be exactly that and rag war and docks yeah. and this and other but when you actually leave them you yeah. can see quite quickly and obviously all of the uh creatures that come back and, and obviously depend on them yeah. and if they're not in any of our gardens or industrialized <laughs> mown fields where the heck they really are being pushed to the margins. It's yeah. not surprised that we're sixty percent down on yeah. you know, and I think that's like the the horrendous figure that I think I you know, we've lost about sixty yeah. percent or something crazy. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's it is, it's it's so sad. I mean, like we were talking right at the beginning about our childhoods yeah. and you know, and, and I do I do find it sad now, like I sort of think of, of children now and I'm like you know, yes, they can go out in nature, but there aren't all of these lovely Where'd things that we used yeah. to take for granted just, yeah. you know, 20, 30, yeah. 40 years ago. Yeah. They they haven't got that abundance that we no. experienced. and Not at all. Yeah. They, they it just haven't. It's just not there or, or you're not, I think you're less encouraged to go out and just fanny around and yeah you know in a field oh yeah. you're just not yeah. encouraged. People just, yeah. yeah. But again, we're probably as children, you're distracted by so many other things these days yeah. how many children do you know that want to just go out and uh 
hang around in a field without yeah. drinking cider, you know, <laughs> as a young child, you know, <laughs> that is allowed to and yeah. would be able to yeah. jump on their bike and go out yeah. and just cycle into a field and just just hang out. Yeah, no, they just don't do it. It is really, it is a difficult one. And I think that's why I, I love what, what Mary stands for and, and what you've done yourselves. And, and I love how it, like you, you've, you've taken us on this beautiful journey of how it's evolved for all of you. And I think hmm. that's important for us all to remember as well is like, um, yeah. I think there's a wonderful quote by Mary Angelou and it's, it goes something along the lines of you do the best you can until you know better and then you do better. And, and totally. I think sometimes yeah. we get so knotted up in like we have to do it, it perfectly. Yeah, we oh, might totally. do it wrong that Absolutely. we don't do anything. And actually, it's like what you've shown is like, yeah, you started with the the forest garden and that has its place and everything. And but you know, maybe if you were doing it now, you're like, well, I might not even have done that. But no, we've totally. done it, and it's and it's you know, it's provided an amazing space for yourselves and incredible resource for <laughs> for your all your local wildlife yeah. perhaps too good a resource at times but um but now you've you've evolved and like you said you you've you're fortunate enough that you've got a bit more extra land available yeah. and and you've are now sort of approaching gardening in in a different way again the um yeah. Yeah, and yeah. the benefits you're seeing from that as well. Yeah, and I think that is the that is a that's the point I think that I would always try and say to people that like Nike have got it right in their just do it. Yeah. You know, it really is a matter of even if it's a tiny little thing and you've even got a, even if you've got a massive garden, but even if you're doing one thing, you're just you know, you're sinking a little thing for water, you're doing something. Yeah. You're you know, you're just literally cordoning off an area just leaving the grass to go along I mean, we don't God, we used to mow our bloody grass you know we used to actually put time and effort and energy and resources into yeah. mowing <laughs> grass and yeah. you think like okay why did we do that that's what we started why are we doing this it's like we haven't got little kids anymore that want to allegedly yeah. but we've got kids to run around and it's like yeah but actually little kids actually probably prefer going through long grass yeah. <laughs> and uh so we just mow a path through the grass now and it's a uh, again a more interesting space it's not a yeah. flat little piece of grass you know yeah. which has got yeah. nothing in as soon as you even just leaving grass to grow long and actually you know complete its whole life cycle all of these things they just need to complete their whole life cycle even the manky old bits of stalks and stems <laughs> and you know that look fairly ugly to the yeah. it's, it's a challenge Fiona that's the thing it, it is, it's a I challenge think, yeah. to the eye for a lot of people when they come and they would look at this if, if you're a little bit turned in in towards this sort of thinking you do get it and I think most people that come here 100 percent get it yeah. but if you're if it, it, it can be a challenge to look at it because it does look a mess a lot yeah. of the time well that's the thing isn't it I think it's a was it sort of the Victorian era we kind of became yeah. obsessed with this notion of tidiness didn't we everything yeah. had to be tidy and in its place and yeah. and again it's it's that you talked of earlier about controlling and you know you know a lot of our lives feel out of control don't they everything yeah. that's sort of coming at us and you know so sort of you know sometimes that gets misdirected and channeled into <laughs> the things yeah. like well I can control my garden so that needs to be all sort of neat yeah. and, and tidy and but it's relearning that actually that is there is the beauty in like leaving you know the the nice oh God, there's so much you and... you know it there's much more beauty there's much yeah. more beauty and that's the thing and I think I don't think I actually got to my point just a minute ago because I keep going off on tangent <laughs> sorry but but around our mile hole we, we'd left this sort of like bank of um what did it have in it? It had thistles and it had um, hedge nettles and it had buttercups and daisies and oxide day. And it was, and loose purple loose stripe. Oh. It's just really gorgeous. Yeah. And in the height of summer, it's beautiful and it yeah. is alive. It's a bird's foot yeah. trefoil and you've got all the, but the, you know, you've got every, every thing there lining up that yep we'll have some of that yeah. no problem but if i'd have put the effort and energy into reefing all of that out and yeah. planting it with things that i'm going to get in my local nursery yes i might have had a few bees i mean that, that's the sort of like the mad thing that of course 
you're trying to support the green industry and you're trying to as a nursery you're like yeah be friendly plants this that, and yeah. the other. it's like yeah but be friendly they might be but i think you know i think mary sort of like says it's like going to mcdonald's and getting a burger versus going to some decent whole food restaurant yeah. where it's actually yeah. going to sustain yeah. you much longer yeah. the difference between what yeah. you're going to be able to buy even, that... yeah even if it's you're getting the veggie burger from yeah McDonald's, exactly it's still, it's exactly still, yeah it's still yeah. not as good as the native yeah. plant that has yeah. taken millennia to grow will alongside all these insects yeah. and bees and birds and this that and the other but they've got to be it just stands to reason doesn't it yeah, they, yeah. it has to be best for them has yeah. to be and I think it's well. The thing I love about Mary's Mary's approach is as well. I think I don't know if the statistics from her. I think it probably is that in the UK alone, like the gardens account for like something like ten million acres oh, of, of land. Probably. It's it's yeah. a huge resource, yeah. and it's like you know. And she's I think she says sort of like you know even if it's like fifty percent, you leave fifty percent for yeah. wildlife, and you can have the other fifty percent if you've got kids and they need to play football. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. you know, you want to or grow your vegetables. That's what we talked about earlier, wasn't it? Yeah. Growing your yeah. own food yeah. and things yeah. and. Yeah, yeah, it's just a, a huge resource that could it's be the tipping point, it's couldn't wasted. it, really? Oh, you know, it could yeah. be. You imagine if tomorrow everyone went, oh, yeah, that, that would be a good <laughs> idea. Let's all do that. Yeah. And you put your mowers away and you just even just let your grass grow along. Yeah. And just, you know. Kind of well, yeah, I mean, we we'd save all the fossil fuel from running all the electric, and... <laughs> yeah, petrol, <laughs> a, a double energy, bonus. and yeah, I know. the yeah. noise pollution even alone would yeah. be, uh, yeah. you know, yeah, we hear buzzing insects instead of leaf blowers. <laughs> I know. Oh, don't don't get us all started on leaf blowers. It's like, jeez. It's, like, it's, it's yeah. pure madness isn't it it's it, pure madness it is. it is complete i mean that that's the one garden tool that i just yeah it, it kind of leaves me speechless i, just I know even... i know we're, we're all like that we're all like that but it's um but definitely you know and and that and we are like you say we are all still evolving but we've got to this point now where we our forest garden has become sort of extrapolated into our big forest garden which is yeah. probably you know i'm definitely we're, we're definitely planting with food for us in mind but more to do well at least with us in mind but more so just to create areas and food plants for like gilda rose and um you know spindle and this and things that you just don't see anymore oh, even wild spindle cherries. Are beautiful aren't they yeah. yeah and we're trying to get them going here I, 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 just things that you just don't see so no. you know because they're needed and I, yeah. yeah that's and yeah. yes oh i i found some wild spindle a, a few years ago and i used it for my wreath on my my door oh, nice. at christmas yeah and it's just absolutely beautiful color pop of color in the yeah. in the yeah. the winter landscape is just amazing yeah. but you so, don't see it anymore no. do you I never see it over here. Oh, we said, like, right, we'll get some of that. We'll try and get that going yeah. in the uh, – because I, I can't remember. It's I know it's a food plant for some – probably some particular moths. Moths yeah. various that I will never yeah. remember the name for. <laughs> but it probably has a lovely berry as well. You know, all, yeah. these, all these things that you just don't see anymore. Yeah. Because, you know, I look at our local hedgerows and they're just – oh, they're oh. – they're oh, just I've... flattened they're flattened oh, it's like i know nuts. ours have been awful our, our local farm has just been flailing the life out of them for like the yep. last month and yep. there's just there's literally they we had actually quite a good season this year for sort of blackberries and, and, and a lot yeah. of hawthorn a lot of berries yeah, yeah we did but yeah. they've all just been mashed up and they're yeah. gone and they're it's gone so now. sad yeah. we've got this we've got a cold snap now and yeah, like, the birds are like where's all our food <laughs> Well, it must be. And it's like, yeah. yeah, they and a lot of them won't survive, lads, and that's yeah. why that's why we're losing them. But yeah. uh yeah. Well then should we end on that happy note? <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> no, we've we've got to find something nicer to say than that, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, but yeah, um, yeah. No, yeah you're right. It is it is getting to the point to round up. So I don't know if there's well, obviously we want to encourage people to go and find Mary's books and I'll put all the links for them and I'll yeah, put yeah, links no, that'd be your, great if you can if you can. Your Brilliant. um your own website as well. But is there anything else that you you just like I think like to encourage people to do or to take away from this uh, conversation just, yeah, today. just 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 just, just th always ask yourself why yeah. why am i doing that and and maybe just try one little check one yeah. little tweak we're in yeah. the front of the year 
you know we've yeah. got the whole gardening year or the whole approach you yeah. know yeah. ahead of us yeah. just have a little think and think like what can I do to actually yeah. try and mitigate the the incredible loss of biodiversity and actually yeah. can just be a help rather than yeah. rather than add into the problem yeah you know just have a yeah. little tweak in life I suppose yeah that's, that's, that's the it. thing I think isn't it, is, it? it is hopeful when yeah. you actually see I, I we get hopeful here because we when you when you do when you make these changes you actively see pretty immediately even when we dug the mile hole we were shocked at how quick water diving beetles they, I don't know where they come from yeah. it's, it's yeah. bad yeah they just literally within 24 hours yeah. loads of them loads yeah. of them we've had loads of newts this year yeah. again never haven't seen a newt since they lived near Winchester I, I yeah. they were obviously hanging around in the grass yeah. loads of frogs they, they, they all come out and now we've yeah. got a buzzard that sits at the top of the tree yeah. because we've left some long grass or you know yeah. all these little changes have a you know a trophic cascade of things that kind of like happen yeah I think, you know. I think that's the beauty of it isn't it is it's yeah. just just do something small to get you yeah. started yeah and take that first step and yeah. then let this beautiful journey basically unfold yeah. before yeah. you yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Totally. Oh, brilliant. Well, thank you so much for oh, your time welcome, today, love. Claire. It's been wonderful to, to learn more about yeah, your nice journey. Yeah, nice to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for listening to the Nurtured by Nature podcast. I truly hope this conversation has brought some hope and inspiration into your life. I would love to have these messages ripple out across the world. So if you can, please share this episode with your friends leave a review on your favourite podcast player and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. I would love to hear from you, so please feel free to connect with me on the links provided in the podcast description. But most importantly, thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. But don't forget to simply get out there and enjoy the natural world.